Virgo Triad here and today we're going to be going over the Treasury Direct Accounts. I'm going to put a disclaimer on this video that a lot of you may become irritated after seeing this video because what I'm going to be doing is breaking down what the treasurydirect.gov website actually is versus the misinformation that you've been told and what a treasury direct account actually is, how you would get one, how you obtain one, how you use one, and what does not qualify as one. First off, let me say um, you're looking at a screenshot from the treasurydirect.gov website. On that website, you can go into uh, the home page and you can look up every bit of information that I'm getting ready to provide for you. TreasuryDirect.gov is where you would go in order to open an account for your TDA marketable securities. Treasury marketable securities are debt instruments. They're issued to raise money that is claimed to be needed in order to operate the federal government and pay off maturing obligations. These liquid securities can be sold for cash in the secondary market. Uh, they can also be stripped into interest and principal components within the secondary market or can be converted from bearer securities into those that can be held in commercial book entry accounts. We'll go more into the detail of how you might want to use treasury marketable securities to raise wealth in another video. Right now what I want to do is just make sure that you understand what Treasury Direct accounts actually are. There are a number of different marketable securities that can be purchased through Treasury Direct. You can um, purchase these via auction, secondarily on the secondary market, um, but the bottom line remains that Treasury Direct accounts have to do with the following marketable securities. They have to do with treasury bills, treasury notes, treasury bonds, FRNs, tips, strips, BECs, and cubes. And I'm gonna go over what each one of those things are and how they mature and how long it takes them to mature, what your interest time frames would to be get pay getting paid on them, and then I will go into a little bit about uh, opening an account with Treasury Direct. So first, let's go over Treasury bills. A Treasury bill is a short-term security that matures in one year or less. Bills are sold at a discounted or at-par rate. At-par means face value. When a bill matures, the investor which means the person who's purchased it receives the face value. The difference that's between the purchase price and the face value of the actual bill equals the interest that's earned. Now, a lot of people, what they will do with all of these securities is they will purchase them at a discounted rate of say 73 cents. Um, on the dollar so that that way they are able to make more than just the regular interest amount. A lot of people purchase via auction, but regardless of how you purchase them, they must be purchased by you or given to you in order for you to need a treasury account at all. This is not free money. These are bills you're purchasing in order to make interest on. So it's very similar to something that you would um, you would do perhaps when trading stock, except for that the majority of the time, it's a fairly sound investment. You're not gonna lose less than your face value. That's why they're quite interesting and, and, and good to have for people who are scared of investing in more risky avenues. The next thing is treasury notes. Treasury notes are interest-bearing securities. 
They have a fixed maturity of not less than one year and not more than 10 years from the date of issue. Treasury currently issues notes in two, three, five, seven, and 10 year maturities. Treasury notes pay interest on a semi-annual basis, so twice a year. When a note matures, the investor receives the face value, but you're receiving your interest twice a year regardless. The next thing is treasury bonds, and this is where a lot of people are getting confused. You're hearing mis misinformation, disinformation. Everybody's got treasury bonds that are worth a million dollars through the Federal, uh, Federal Reserve Bank and their treasury direct accounts, TDA accounts. Uh, some of you have even been told to go on to the treasurydirect.gov website to calculate the amounts or to go on Fidelity to count the amounts and I will be going into information about fidelity and all of that in addition in other videos but I want you to understand treasury bonds are exactly what I'm getting ready to tell you that they are and nothing else treasury bonds are interest bearing securities with maturities that are over 10 years treasury bond bonds pay interest on a semi-annual basis so once again twice a year and of course, when the bond matures, the investor receives the face value. That's it. That's end of the story. Treasury bonds pay interest on a semi-annual semi basis. So twice a year, you'd receive interest on the amount of the bond and you'd receive be able to cash in on the full amount of the bond after the 10-year period is over with or whatever whatever the actual maturity date is for that specific bond. Now, when you go on to a, a, a website like Fidelity and you use the calculator, you're able to find out how much a bond will be approximately worth based on today's uh, interest rates 30 years from now. So if you purchase a $1,000 treasury bond, you can put that bond number into the calculator and it will tell you how much it will be worth in 30 years. Okay, so a lot of people like treasury bonds because they tend to bring in a lot more money for them in, in the end game. But the fact is, is that regardless of how much you spend on a bond, regardless of how many years it is before it matures, the basic principles still remain. And that is that you must own them. You must have purchased them or been give, gifted them. And that would generally come from a family member, somebody passing it down. This isn't something that's sitting out there that everybody has. You know about it. When you, when you have a treasury bond, you know you have one. Okay, it's, there's no secret to it. The next thing is the floating rate note, the FRN. So on July 31st of 2013, the Treasury published amendments to its marketable securities auction rules. And that was to accommodate the auction and the issuance of a floating rate note. These securities complement Treasury's other uh, marketable securities. Treasury bills, notes, bonds, and inflation-protected securities like TIPS um, the floating rate notes are in the amendment section of this website. Um, and it's, it's something that you would find in the auction regulation section. It is pages and pages long for you to read. Um, so I want you to understand that there is a floating rate note, uh, that can be purchased to protect your investments and that is something that's provided by treasurydirect.gov, but I'm not going to go into a great deal of, of uh, information on it unless you guys request it later because it is probably information for the purpose of this video that no one really is going to need. Next, we have Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, TIPS. And once again... This is for the purpose of protecting your securities. They're things that are purchased alongside 
uh, your treasury bills, notes, and bonds in order to protect you from inflation. Um, so these are things, once again, that there's a long explanation to them. It changes all the time. The information on negative rates for tips and, and, and inflation protection um, uh, regulations, once again, you would go to the treasurydirect.gov website and just uh, search for Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, which is also known as TIPS, and it will give you all of the information on how to deal with um, adding those to your account. STRIPS. STRIPS is an acronym for Separate Trading of Registered Interest and Principle of Securities. Strips let investors hold and trade the individual interest and principal components of eligible treasury notes and bonds as separate securities. So basically, it's a way for you to sell them secondarily. Strips are popular with investors who want to receive a known payment on a specific future date. Strips are called zero coupon securities. The only time an investor receives a payment from strips is at its maturity. So there's no dividends that are going to be coming out twice a year to you. Um, this is something that is a zero coupon security. Once again, that means that payment comes at maturity and only at maturity. Strips are not issued or sold directly to investors. Strips can only be purchased held only through financial institutions and government security brokers and dealers. Once again, not something that's going to be pertinent to this video necessarily, but I want you to know it is something that is dealt with when you actually open your account. If you have strips that you have purchased through a government securities broker or through any of your financial institutions, that information would be withheld within your accounts. When you log on to your account, you're going to see all that information on strips also. And finally, the last thing that TreasuryDirect.gov actually uh, provides information on are the uh, BECCS and the CUBES. Um, and these are Treasury Direct programs that convert stripped bearer securities into book entry securities that can be held in commercial book entry accounts with brokers and financial institutions. Um, Bearer Corpora Conversions, which is BECCS, allows holders of the principal portions or uh, corpora of the U.S. Treasury bearer securities that have been stripped of all non-callable coupons to convert their bearer principal securities to book entry forms. And cubes are coupons under book entry safekeeping. This allows holders of detached bearer coupons to convert their securities to book entry form. Only full dollar amounts can be held in cubes. Amounts of less than $1 per cube. CUSIP will not be credited to an account. Now, none of that is really going to be making much sense to anyone, chances are. Because once again, this is in the in the area of creditors, in the area of businesses, um, these are things that you would need to look into a lot more if you were interested in uh, dealing in this area of uh, marketable securities. Um, what's transferable, what's not transferable, all of these different things. You would need to actually take a look at the data yourself um, if you are a business owner or a business investor. But as an individual, you really... Um, would only need to take a look at the first mm, three and then the protections on the uh, Treasury Direct website. So just some additional information uh, on treasurydirect.gov. Uh, once again, there are no TDA accounts as they have been represented to you. They You have been given inaccurate information on so many levels. It is extremely upsetting to me that any of you have had to go around in circles the way you have. I'm hoping that this will help you to understand what TDA accounts actually are. Once again, let me reiterate, in order to hold a TDA account, a Treasury Direct account, you must be the owner or the recipient of a treasury bill, a treasury note, or a treasury bond. 
In order to be a recipient of a treasury bond, it would be gifted to you from another consumer. This is not something the Federal Reserve does. This is something that you purchase yourself as a form of investment. If there are any questions about this, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I'll be doing a question and answer video at the end of each week. Um, we're going to move forward with another video very shortly here, probably tomorrow, that's going to give us additional information with regards to the different platforms that you can use um, to find out more information regarding bonds, so on and so forth. And then we will be heading into, towards the end of the week, uh, information about charging off debt and the different ways that it is legal to do that. So... Um, I hope everybody has a great day. I hope this was helpful to people. Uh, please remember to share this information and um, subscribe so you get updates if you like what you're hearing. Uh, please share with people if you can. This, this news needs to get out there so that people understand where to go to find accurate information and what's real and what's not real. Um, People are finding themselves in, in, in debt due to these reversals because they've been given misrepresented information on these uh, TDA accounts that really don't exist. They certainly don't exist within the regular banking system or the Federal Reserve Bank. Anyway, with that being said, everyone have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.